Hi there, my name is Mr. Code, and in this video we're going to discuss quantization in Python. I'm going to divide this video in two parts. In the first part, I'm going to explain how quantization works in a very general sense, which holds for any signal within signal processing. And then we're going to dive in how it works for image processing. In the second part, we're going to look at an application within image processing, which is color quantization, which we're going to implement in Python. Now let's start with explaining what quantization is. Quantization can be defined in the following way. It is the process of mapping a large set of input values to output values in a countable smaller set. So basically quantization is about the mapping of a large set to a smaller set. And I'm going to underline the words values here because it's really about the values that the input and the output eventually can take. We can visualize this definition in the following way. We have a set of input values. We have some function Q, which is the quantizer. And we're going to map the input values using Q to a set of output values. Now, the set of input values can be anything. For example, it could be the set of real numbers. And then the only restriction that we have is that the set of output values is smaller. And this mapping is also often referred to as a many to few mapping because a large set is mapped to a set with relatively only a few elements. This mapping, as a result, has the following two very important properties, which are that quantization is irreversible and it's nonlinear. Let me explain why this is. Imagine that we look at a specific element within the input values. We're now going to map this value using quantizer Q. Therefore, this value is mapped to this output value. Now keep in mind that Q maps a set that's larger to a set that's smaller. But if we want to refer this action, we start with this element and we want to go back to where this input value came from, that there are multiple input values that correspond to this output value. And therefore we are left with the question, which one should we choose to revert the action? In general, we just can't answer this because during quantization, quantitative information is lost. That's the implication of mapping a large value set to a smaller one. Besides, this quantizer Q can be any function, as long as it maps the larger value set to one which is smaller. Now you may wonder, what if I plot this function? What properties does it have? And what does it look like? Well, let's look at this. So if we plot this, on the x-axis we have the input values, and on the y-axis we have the output values. Now what characterizes Q is that it has some kind of steps. And this makes sense because one set of input values is associated with one specific output value. And if we do this for every input value, then we end up with a smaller set, which then corresponds to the smaller set of output values. And this quantizer is called a uniform quantizer. To explain this, I'm going to introduce the following terminology. These values on the y-axis are also called the reproduction levels, to which the input values are mapped. Now, these sets of input values are also referred to as the quantization cells. Now, if the sizes of the quantization cells and the differences between the reproduction levels stays the same, then we have uniform quantization, or in other words, a uniform quantizer Q. Now, if this is not the case, we have a non-uniform quantizer. Okay, let's now look at the specific application within image processing for quantization. A very logical application for this is analog to digital conversion. And for image processing, we would then convert an analog image, or in other words, a continuous image, to a digital image. The question is now, how do we do this? And of course, this involves quantization. Now, an analog image has continuous X and Y coordinates. It also has a continuous amplitude. Now for a digital image, we want these values to be discretized. The X and Y coordinates are discretized by using a technique called sampling. And the continuous amplitude is discretized using quantization. For this video, we are interested in this quantization process. Of course, take into account that an image is just an example, a signal. We can also do the same for audio or for videos or whatever. All it would change are the coordinate values. So for audio, we would only have an X and for video, we would have X, Y and a Z. With image processing, this kind of quantization is also known as color quantization. And this is what we're going to implement using Python. So now let's look at some Python code. For this example in Python, we will be processing the following image. And as a disclaimer, the code that I'm going to present also works with color images. For ease of explaining this, we're going to use this grayscale image. 
Let's first look at the imports that I'm using to create the code. These are the following packages. I'm using matplotlib, numpy, skimage, and sklearn to achieve this. So all we need is just these four packages. Also, I'm going to predefine the number of colors. And this value represents the number of output values that we end up with after quantization. Let's now load the image that we've seen before, which is called Sherlock because it originates from an original Sherlock movie. So we read this and the values of image raw are all going to be between 0 and 255. We want to make the computation a bit easier. We're going to parse this to a NumPy array and we're going to divide the values by 255 to end up with a matrix that has values between 0 and 1. Now, Based on the shape of this matrix, we're going to define an image array by reshaping it. Therefore, now is the shape of h times w, comma d. Now let's briefly analyze the image that we're working with. So first I'm going to plot the image, I'm going to plot the original image, and we're going to plot a histogram of the original image. But the plot thing is nothing special. After plotting the histogram, I'm going to use the raw version of the image. Now we end up with the following plots. So here we have the original image, and we see that the image covers the entire grayscale domain. So here we have the number of pixels that correspond to these grayscale values, and there are a lot of dark spots, for example in the suit or in the hair, um, that cause these peaks. But the most important thing is that it covers the entire grayscale domain, and using quantization we want to reduce this to only two grayscale values. Now let's implement a quantizer that achieves this. So I'm going to use k-means to implement this quantizer. Do keep in mind that you can implement any quantizer, which basically selects two color values. I'm using k-means to do this. For this, I take a random image sample, then I'm going to train k-means based on the sample, and then we're going to let k-means predict the labels that will correspond to the image pixels. And based on labels, we can build the quantized image. For this, we first initialize an image, and then we iterate over every pixel and assign its corresponding color that it should obtain. After this, we have image out, which is the quantized image. Now let's plot this quantized image and also its histogram as we have done before for the original image. The code looks like this. Again, for plotting, there's nothing special. After the histogram, we also convert the image back and then create a histogram of the image. Now we end up with the following image. So this is now the quantized image, and this is the histogram of the quantized image. What's interesting about the image is that we only end up with two grayscale values, which is exactly what we wanted to achieve. These grayscale values are these two peaks in the histograms. Now we see that this peak contains more pixels. That's because the image has a lot of dark spots now. Now, of course, we predefined the number of colors to equal two. We can also assign any other value, of course. Now let's assign four, for example. Now we end up with the following quantized image, which has a lot more detail. And in the histogram, we see indeed that there are four peaks that correspond to these grayscale values. So as we saw earlier, quantization is irreversible because it throws away quantitative information and we also see this very well from these examples because when comparing the two two grayscale values case with the four ones we see that there is uh, much more detail in the one where we have four colors and if you understand this you basically grasp the essence of quantization okay so that's it i've explained how quantization works we have moved to an image processing application, which is color quantization, and we have implemented color quantization in Python. If you thought this video was useful, make sure to hit the thumbs up to give this video a like. If you still have any questions, make sure to use the comment section below. And if you want to see more of Mr. Code, make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.